Let's look at the bright side of things. This virus has definitely changed our world overnight. But our houses have become homes, bustling with activity. Everyone is finding time for their hobbies, be it cooking, baking, gardening, craft. Creativity is on the rise. A lot of youngsters have taken up agriculture. We finally find time to talk to our parents, even play board games with them. When all the familiar doors were closed, we opened new doors. We found new ways to work, live, smile and survive these extraordinary times. We also found new ways to do everything, haven't we? Be it shopping, chilling with friends, playing games. We have found new ways of learning too. Even if this lockdown extends this entire year, we will make sure that all the syllabus is covered. Exams are conducted. Lockdown didn't stop us from conducting the plus two exam, did it? The results are going to be announced very soon. So keep yourself positive. You're not going to waste this academic year. The government, the teachers and your parents will do everything possible to give you the support you need to complete this academic year successfully. So there is nothing to worry. We all know very well that the online classes, the video lessons, the WhatsApp chats, the classes on Victor's channel, the assignments submitted online, all these things cannot compare with the real classroom experience. That was really vibrant. That was really fun. We all missed that. But what I am trying to tell you is that if this is how this year is going to be. There is nothing we can do about it. We just have to learn to live with it. We have to learn to live with the virus. We have to learn to adjust with the online learning method. We have to be smart at it. We have to master it. You know? What I am trying to tell you is that if this is how this year is going to be, we might as well be good at this online learning. It is not that difficult. It is actually very effective. But you need to have some self-discipline. You need to be self-motivated. Your parents have to go to work. Your teachers cannot come to your house and tell you to study. So you need to prepare a routine. A routine for your studies and stick to it and follow it very strictly. Just like it was during those times when you used to get up every day, every morning get dressed and get ready for school. Even now, wake up early, get ready for online class and keep aside at least four to five hours every day for your schoolwork. Each one of you have to take that decision yourself that you're going to watch Victor's channel at the prescribed time for your class. The timetable is sent to you every day. Even if you miss it, you can watch it later because I am sharing you that all the teachers are sharing the YouTube link, link, the YouTube link on the WhatsApp group. Then once you finish watching the classes on Victor's channel, you participate actively in the discussions on WhatsApp. Then. Once you finish the discussion, you start working on your assignments. Then you submit your assignments. Then again comes the next day with the next lesson. 
you know get adjusted to this new way of learning it is so important i am telling you again you need to be self motivated and self disciplined to succeed during these times so if there are students amongst you who still haven't started studying who still haven't watched any of the online classes the classes on victor's channel who still haven't submitted any assignments it is time to start the first lesson is over in many subjects more lessons have been covered so almost one month june is over the first month of this year is over so there is nothing to worry if you haven't started studying if you haven't watched anything so far if you have been busy playing games on your phone or whatever well, all the victors channel classes are there in the youtube channel of victors i have shared all the links i will share that again if you want all my video lessons are on my youtube channel watch everything and today onwards participate actively in all the discussions with your teachers with me remember that all of us your teachers your parents all of us are pushing you like this to ensure that you have a good future going forward all jobs would need online skills and proficiency in english and maybe more languages think of it in this way this online learning phase is going to be useful for all of us having said all that let me come to today's class out of all the assignments that you have submitted i have picked a few these are students who have been very enthusiastic about the online method right from the beginning and they work really hard on their presentations so today they are going to present their assignments before the class for all of us to watch and learn first let's welcome abdullah city of 12th c to present the profile of christine lagarde Hello guys, it's me Abdullah. I'm studying 12th B. So today I'm here to say a small profile of Christine Lagarde. So Christine Lagarde was born on 1st January 1956. It's a French politician and lawyer between July 2011 and November 2019. She served as a chair and managing director of the International Monetary Fund, which means IMF. She was the first woman who became finance minister in G8 economy and the first woman who had had the both the european central banks and imf in 2019 she was ranked to on world's 100 most powerful women's list now she has been serving as a president of the european central bank since november 2019 so this is the small profile of christine lagarde thank you love you all Next, Adila Mansoor of 12th A will present how to begin a speech. Good morning to one and all. I am Adila Mansoor, studying in Himachal Islam Higher Secondary School in Class 12. I am here sharing some different ways of addressing a crowd or audience in a speech. Many people, leaders, students use different types of welcoming as per the situations. Some of them are, dear friends. Dear students, dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, respected dignitaries on the dais, respected faculty, my name is, I am from, and this talk is about, hello everyone and thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to be here. 
What a beautiful day it is and I am so happy to be sharing it with all of you. I am so grateful to be here in front of you. There are a lots of methods to address a gathering. The fact must be that we should have a good start with an interesting and pleasing way so that the audience will show a great interest from the start to the very end. Thank you. Now, Fatima Zuha of 12th B will present a speech on women empowerment in India. Hi everyone. Good morning to the all excellencies and my friends. I would like to speak on the topic of women empowerment in India. Empowering women in India is very necessary to bring gender equality or we can say that gender equality is very necessary to empower women. Women are bearing enormous hardship from the ancient time in India. During and after humanitarian emergencies, especially armed conflicts, there are many private and government organizations and institutions supporting women empowerment, promoting policy making, promoting gender sensitive data collection, improving women's health awareness and expanding their independence in their life. Despite such supports and human rights, women are still dependent, poor, unhealthy and illiterate. We need to think the reason behind and solve all on immediate basis. If men understand the power of women and let them go ahead to make themselves independent women and the power of family and country. Gender equality is a first step for women empowerment in India. Men think that women are only made for handling the household work and take the responsibility of home and family. Instead of thinking about these things, they must take some responsibilities of home. Both men and women are responsible for everything of the daily routine. If men take some responsibility, women can get some time to think about themselves and their careers. There is a need to change the mentality of everyone that women are very weak and they cannot do anything. Women empowerment is a key to strengthen their participation in decision making which is the most important key to socio-economic development. There is a social, cultural and family pressure on women which act as a main issue to the gender equality. The women have a lot of pressure from parents, society and they force to be the main caregiver and caretaker of all family members. Such pressure in the society and home lowers down the career ambitions of women than men. She needs to be involved in family decision making which may bring a slight improvement in women's condition in male-headed households. In India, it is very challenging to bring changes in women in traditional societies. It can be changed, but it will take some time and regular efforts. Thank you. Sharing few points from our WhatsApp discussion. In my opinion, the three L's such as learning, labor and leadership will help to empower women. I believe that three L's help to empower women. Empowerment of women is a necessity for the very development of the society. In my point of view, these three L's are the three essentials of women empowerment. In my opinion, they should come out of their comfort zone and make full use of their abilities. This way can build a better world to live. In my opinion, these three L's such as learning, labor and leadership are the three candles which light in a heavy darkness in front of a woman. It will get every woman out of the darkness. Sajarul Tahab presents the status of Indian women. Majority of Indians don't have a concept of equality for women. The women in India are treated like lesser human beings. Half of the women is denied facilities of education, compelled to marry before leaving childhood, forced to maternity even before leaving school, kept under subjection 
during marriage and forced to live a life of misery during widowhood women are facing many psychological and physical harassment atrocities against women begins from womb with the female foetus decide infanticide sexual harassment rape and dowry related tortures and ends up with tomb women in india are treated like lesser human being they are marginalized sidelined humiliated and kept away from public spheres if we analyze the sex ratio in india and the world population 50% of is women but we when it comes to the question of administration women are considered as second class citizen very few of women rise up to the top when women in india participate in all areas as men our social conditions will be better our cultural conditions will be better even our economical condition will be better than others but very few of women get a chance to rise up and be empowered mohammad danil the all african proverb if you educate a boy you train a man but if you educate a girl you train a village is still relevant in developing countries like india where boys still predominate educational opportunities this adage realizes the importance of women's education and recognizes the fact that educating girls not only benefits that girl but generations to come this ripple effect will lead to the development of the entire family the village and the nation many villages in india still face low female literacy rates and high gender disparity in the enrollment of foreigners schooling it's also true that most girls assist the women in the family in doing chores in and around the house if the mother is educated she will make sure her sons and daughters go to school studies show that women are more likely to spend their resources on health and education investing up to 90% of their earnings in this way compared with just 30 40% for men an educated wife can support her husband in a better way and also take informed decision on health and nutrition of the family mothers work hard behind the success of their child similarly we see that behind every successful man there is a woman it could be any woman mother wife sister or daughter so as the adage implies it is quite evident that educating women will empower the nation Nihal NK is presenting a letter to his wife. Today in this video I'm explaining an activity. In this activity I'm writing a letter as a father. Here the question is letter to your wife sensitizing her on the importance of empowering your daughter with education. From this question I have a role of father and I need to sensitize my wife to understand the importance of empowering your daughter with education. So there is address date It's an informal letter. Shall we begin? Dear wife, hope you are fine. I am fine yet too. How is the studies of my little girl Jenna? Is she doing well at school? I would love to know. Yesterday, I got a letter from him. After I reading it, I was quite shocked and upset. I didn't expect this out. Jenna is a teenager and she is just 17. marrying her off at this age she is still a child when she was 13 she had told me one day that she want to be a teacher then i asked her why she answered that i want to educate people who can afford money for education when i heard this from her i was so so happy i can't explain in words how proud i felt that day with god's grace We have a brilliant daughter, Ayesha. Why are you keep blocking your daughter's dreams? I understand your fear. It's a bad world, and I agree that there are chances of her getting involved in bad things like drugs or bad affairs. But we are here to take care of her. Give her some time, my love. Let her dreams come true. I give you my word. She will make us proud one day. Take good care of her. I'll try to get home soon. For now stop thinking about her marriage. Hope to hear from you soon. With love, Neel Majid. Next, Amina Nawrin will present her essay on the 3 Ls of empowerment. Evo 
woman she is an infinity like stars in sky because her potential is also infinity but she is limited by restrictions and traditions she is suppressed and oppressed so much that she can't shine her shine is eclipsed by the clouds of societal blocks the world's income by population analysis and economic census shows that only 15% is women's contribution in our world only few women reach their full potential and pursue careers that they are capable of why because there are many barriers or blocks that prevent them from getting educated and from taking up a profession majority of women don't have an income at all this weakens the financial stability of families Mothers are always a model for all children. My mother teaches me through her life that there is no difference between a man and a woman in their capacity to earn an income. In my family, women are educated and they have jobs too. They earn and they share their income with their family. I have grown up seeing my father totally comfortable with my mother being a working woman. But still, in many conservative families, women are suppressed. Every day we hear news about women facing many kinds of atrocities physical as well as mental abuses in our society it has become a trend to sensationalize in our community and society there is a misguided notion that women are weak the great creator has blessed them with the ability of creating or bearing children how would a woman survive a 9 month pregnancy if she was physically and mentally weak Even raising children and managing the house are not simple tasks. They all need great physical and mental strength. Actually, I think women are much stronger than men. I completely agree to the views of Christine Lagarde. She lighted three candles: learning, labor, and leadership. These three candles shall light up, and they will get every woman out of the heavy darkness in front of them. I think. The three elves can change the entire world by ensuring equal participation of women in all areas. Thereby, women shall contribute to the economic growth of the countries and the world. Learning is the foundation upon which any change is built. Labor helps women to flourish and achieve their true potential. Leadership enables women to rise and fulfill their innate abilities and talents. A mother can teach her son that a woman is not to be confined in home. Our revolution should start from our own family. Christine Lagarde said that if we educate a girl, we train a village. An educated woman will pass on everything she learned to her entire family. She will make sure that the children are educated and will be an able guide to her husband and an informed carer of the elders in the family. Studies show that the women spend a huge part of their earnings for the education and the welfare of the family. The an educated women in each family shall transform the society in no time. Nowadays, women are facing many gender discriminations. Due to this, women sometimes lack confidence to match their competence. Family and society plays a major role in building the self-confidence in each woman. With encouragement and support from the family and society she shall shine bright like the sun and her light shall not to the entire world let me conclude by reminding all women to take a strong decision to be the flame of the three candles mentioned and light up the world Dia Maryam of 12th B will conclude the presentations of this lesson by sharing how the women in her family overcame the blocks and barriers in front of them i'm going to read out the answer to the paragraph question do you think there are blocks or barriers that prevent women from achieving their full potential do you think that women in our society are participating and contributing to the economic growth of country observe the women in your family and community and write a paragraph yes i truly believe that women face many blocks or barriers in matters of their education and careers Gender discrimination, marginalization, educational backwardness and countless atrocities are the sad realities of many women. Most people still think that the duty of a woman is to take care of their children and family members. It is true to a certain extent, but women are not only made for doing such jobs. They also have dreams, ambitions about their future. I think that women can contribute her full potential to the society only with a supportive and understanding family. 
in developing countries like india only few women are fortunate to get educated and fewer get a chance to pursue a career here we can adopt the african adage that if you educate a boy you train a man if you educate a girl you train a village it is absolutely correct because when we educate a boy he will study and he will achieve his own needs but when we educate a girl it is equal to educating many because women will definitely share her knowledge and resources with her children and family members so i think that women can surely contribute or participate in the economic growth of country if she is well trained in my family there are many of women in government service my mother is a great example she has shown me that if we have a strong will we can achieve anything at her early age itself she had started taking tuition for many children and her ambition was to become a teacher after her marriage she had dropped her dream but she didn't stop dreaming her ambition to become a good teacher was realized many years later so she always advises me to study well prepares my mind to dream big and give me the motivation to work hard for my good future and because of all that she does she is my role model i consider myself fortunate that like her many women in my family have successfully broken the walls of societal restrictions and entered the world of freedom thank you all the students who presented today did a wonderful job let's give them a big round of applause well done children so we have discussed all the important questions from the first lesson here all of you need to write down the answers in your notebook and now it is time to start studying i'll be announcing a test soon it will be like an online test in a google form i have to figure it out some of you might be finding these answers and the material given a bit too advanced if there is a problem understanding if you have facing any difficulty text me personally i can form a separate group for you and there we could work on some simpler uh, notes you know so our aim is to help each student score his or her maximum we are not comparing you with anybody each person compete with himself or herself and get his or her maximum score agreed as usual i leave you with a quote tell me and i forget teach me i may remember involve me i learn this is to remind you again that the best way to learn a language or anything is to practice it to get involved in it okay so use every opportunity that comes your way to practice the english language i am looking forward to your active participation in all the coming lessons too and stay positive bye